and you know this, for years, for years, Neil Armstrong refused to be interviewed. I found that to be one of the strangest things of anything. You would think that the first man on the moon, the national hero that he is, would have talked to everyone about the experience, about the wonder. Given that didn't that his happen. His role model was Lindbergh, and Lindbergh became a very public person and was very much out there with his political views and all that. You'd think that, that uh, Neil would have at least wanted to be a role model for the next generation. Instead, he became essentially a recluse, a hermit. And on every anniversary, they would wind him up and trot him out in public. The most interesting one was during the Clinton years at the White House on the 20th anniversary. Where do you remember what Armstrong said, the most stunning thing that an astronaut could say, and I think in this milieu get away with it? Give us the quote. Well, he, he said two things. At the start of his speech, he compared himself and the other astronauts to birds, to parrots. And he then made a joke, and he said, and parrots don't fly very well. Well, what else do parrots do, <laughs> They repeat what, what they're they told. Are told. Plant his foot on the surface of the moon, has been a pioneer in many ways. And Mr. Armstrong, in asking you to come to the podium, may I say that millions of Americans have admired you not only for your achievement, but for the quiet dignity with which you have conducted yourself and represented not only our country, but humankind. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, members of Congress, fellow astronauts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wilbur Wright once noted that the only bird that could talk was the parrot, and he didn't fly very well. <laughs> So I'll, I'll be brief. <laughs> this, this week, uh, America has been recalling the Apollo program and reliving uh, the memories of those times in which so many of us here, colleagues here in the first rows, were immersed. Our old astrogeology mentor, Gene Shoemaker even called in one of his comments to mark the occasion with spectacular Jovian fireworks. And reminding us once again of the power and consequence of celestial extracurricular activities. Many Americans were part of Apollo, about one or two in each thousand citizens all across the country. They were asked by their country to do the impossible, to envisage, to design, and to build a method of breaking the bonds of Earth's gravity, and then sally forth and visit another heavenly body. The principal elements leaving Earth, navigating in space, and descending to a planet unencumbered with runways and traffic controls would include the major requirements necessary for a spacefaring people. Today, a space shuttle flies overhead with an international crew. A number of countries have international space programs. 
During the space age, we have increased the knowledge of our universe a thousandfold. Today we have with us a, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say, we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. Those challenges are yours. In many fields, not the least of which is space, because there lies human destiny. idealistic faces, riveted on the first man on the moon, talking to them, and he looked at them and he said, there are wonders beyond belief. There are truths to be revealed if one can remove truth's protective layers. Now, where in the world does one get the idea the truth has to have protection to be found out?